Welcome to this week's YouTube video. Get the sewing machines out, dust the cobwebs off the pedal, and let's make some stuff. I have some scrap fabric, easy sew projects that will get you back on your machine. So if you're looking for a project to practice your sewing skills, maybe you're a newbie, or you just want to make something in an afternoon, I've put together this sewing project compilation video that I hope you enjoy. Let's dig into the basket of scrap fabric and we're gonna make some hand warmers. You're also gonna need some thread, some pins, some rice and some essential oil, but that's optional. Give your fabric a good iron before cutting it so there's no wrinkles in the fabric and set up your machine. Put out two squares of fabric that are five inches by five inches. Place the right side of the fabric together and line up the edges. Pin the fabric together and make sure to leave a gap large enough that you can turn it the right way out and that will also be big enough to fill with rice. Also, I used a half an inch seam allowance for this. Before turning the fabric the right way out, I just clipped all of the four corners. paper as a funnel if you need to to insert the rice into the little bag that you've just made but I had a jug that had a spout on it and I found that that was really handy. I filled the bag about three quarters the way full and I left a gap so that I could easily stitch it closed. Now you could do a hand stitch on this but would you believe me if I told you I had no hand stitching needles they were too big the ones that i had were too thick so i just was lazy and i stitched a straight stitch across to close the gap if you want to add some essential oils in i added about three to four drops you can mix the essential oil beforehand in a little bowl just be careful when you're doing it the way i am that you don't get any essential oil on the fabric as it might mark it to heat these warmers up, give them 30 to 40 seconds in a microwave. I found 30 seconds was plenty, but it's gonna depend on the wattage of your microwave. I also made a larger one that will be perfect as more of a heat patch, so you could use it on your shoulder, or you could use it on a tummy when you have cramps. And this is 12 inches by six inches, if you wanna try those dimensions for that size. And I found that that one took a bit longer to heat up. It took about a minute to heat up but you could always start slow and then build up the heat. So if you've ever wondered how I get my hair curly without heat, well a tiny bit of heat because you do have to dry your hair first. I use one of these but as you can see it's really bashed. So this is one I bought, it's a heatless hair curler and mine has, mine's been through the wars. As you can see the sponge on the inside has just gone flat, hairspray on it, yeah. It's not looking too fresh. I'm gonna make a new one. I have some like satin kind of ribbon. I actually think this is Christmas tree ribbon, but this material is gonna be perfect to make a new hair wrap. And I'm gonna show you how I make it. And I'm gonna give you all the dimensions and everything so you can do it yourself. I'll give you a little demo at the end and I'll share how I wrap it around. I did actually, the curls that are in my hair today, I did actually do with my wonky one. If I had a nice consistent, hair tube thingy, my curls would be a bit more consistent. <laughs> but anyway, this is what I do to get this kind of tousled, loose look. I wash my hair um, in the evening, I just blast it rough dry with the hair dryer, and then I stick in my curler, which I'm about to make a new one. If you have some satin or silk fabric, that would be perfect for this project, as I read that it reduces the frizz in your hair, but do use whatever you have. So if cotton or polycotton is all you have, you can still make this. Measure out and cut a piece of fabric that is 35 inches in length and 3.5 inches in width. Cut 
fold your strip and fabric in half with the right sides of the fabric facing each other. You can use pins for this, but I just find when I'm working with a silkier fabric that the pins can mark it, so I'm just using these sewing clamps instead. Starting at one of the ends of the fabric, place it into the machine and do a straight stitch across. With the needle still in the fabric, lift your foot, press your foot, sorry, and turn it and then stitch down the length of your hair roll. When you get to the bottom, don't stitch across, you're going to leave an opening so that we can stuff this. It's much easier to use this safety pin to turn this the right way out. I didn't have one, but because this isn't too narrow, it's easy enough to pull it through with your hands. Once I had it pulled the right way out, I then used some filler to fill it really tight and I packed all of the filler in. The filler that I'm using is actually from a cushion pad that I had. The hardest part of this project was actually filling up the length of tube with the filler. So take your time with this and I just used my ruler to push it down to the end. Once I got to the end, I tucked in the raw edges and I just did a straight stitch across to seal this up. Here's a quick demo on how I use it in my hair. So I just use a claw clip to secure it to the center while I wrap it around and I do it one side at a time. I start at the front with my fringe and layered pieces and then I just continuously wrap it around and tie a scrunchie in at the end. Once the two sides are done, sometimes I'll tie a knot in the back and then I sleep on this overnight. I leave it overnight and then I take it out the next morning. Now, I also want to share that you can, I have seen people do this with lots of things. I've seen people do it with leggings. Nah, who wants to sleep with leggings on your head? I find these comfy enough to sleep in. Another thing I've seen people do is doing it the opposite way, but I just do this way because this is what works for me. So play around. The thicker your strip of hair, so the th do thicker strips of hair, is what I'm trying to say, for looser waves, and smaller and more strands for tighter, tighter curls. Am I saying that right? Um, I'm gonna take this down my hair, because my hair's overdone. I've also seen people using dressing gown belts, so the belt off a dressing gown, but the only thing with that is, I'd say it's gonna cause more frizz in your hair. So I've seen like satin and silk fabric recommended for keeping your hair frizz free. 
which is why I went for this fabric. But use whatever fabric you have. You could practice this with like, you know, bed sheet fabric or if you have um, cotton length of fabric, you could use that as well. Whatever works for you. It also takes a couple of goes to get a knack that works for your hair type and your hair cut. So don't be worried if you do it the first time, you're like, oh man, my hair's frizzy. Do try it a couple of, couple of times to get a knack that works for you. The knack that works for me is when I'm sticking it in, so eye level, I want my first curl. So for example, this one to be eye level. So when I'm doing this front section, I make sure it's around there. Does that make sense? Sorry for looking through the viewfinder. I know that's probably really annoying, but I have no mirror, well, behind me. You could also do a shorter one if you had shorter hair, um, but I like having the little bit extra because then you can tie it behind if you want it. So yeah, it does work for short hair, but just bear in mind where you position the curls. So if you have like a bob and you just want a few curls, start up here at the eye level and then keep going till it's down. I'm really bad at giving hair tutorials. This ain't my jam. I also have a tutorial if you wanna make scrunchies on an older video as well. Don't worry if the ends are quite curly because it will fall um, throughout the day. And sometimes I'll just spray a bit of like texture spray in it um, just to give it a bit of fluff. And also if it, if you do it the first time, you're like, oh my God, my hair is huge. Um, you could tame it with a curling iron, which defeats the purpose of the heatless curls. But if you do need to tame it, it's kind of easier when your hair is already curly to hold the curl and then just throw in one or two curls around the head just to give it a bit more, how would we say? Maybe definition structure, I don't know the word. Anyway, let me know if you try it and if it worked for you. And if it didn't work for you, I'm sorry. And if I gave you a bad hair day, I'm extra sorry. Let's take an old towel, some cotton, and either some ribbon or some bias binding. I'm gonna leave the measurements to my travel roll in the description, but this is fully customizable. So if you wanna use this for, you know, makeup brushes or different size toiletries, you can customize this. So you're gonna measure it out and you're gonna cut one piece of towel and one piece of your top cotton. And then we're gonna work on the bias binding now. To make a ribbon, I had some bias that was in my stash, but you could totally use a ribbon or you could use some of the same cotton to make this. So I am just making two strips for putting on the side and these are gonna be our strings so that we can tie it up. So I'm placing the two strings on the left-hand side of the tail and then placing the patterned fabric, the wrong side of the fabric to the towel. So the pattern side is facing down. You're gonna stitch all the way around, but you're going to leave an opening that is big enough for your hand to get through. So don't stitch it all the way around. Leave a gap so that you can pull it through. Clip the corners of the fabric to get a nice pointed edge and you can remove any excess or bulky towel fabric from the side before you pull it through. When you pull it through, you can just do a top stitch all the way around and that will seal up the opening that was at the side that you used to pull through. So now for the fun part, we are gonna make air pockets. So grab your items that you want to roughly stick in. You can just use these as a guide and you can make as many or as few pockets as you want. I'm just measuring out the bits that I have. So I have some uh, body shampoo. I have a bar, uh, body shampoo? Body shampoo, that doesn't sound right. Soap. <laughs> And with the help of Blondie, I'm measuring out what I want to stick in and then I'm going to do straight stitches to make my pockets. Just make sure to do a nice strong re reverse stitch at the beginning and the end 
of your stitching to give you a nice strong stitch to keep your pockets in place and they're good and sturdy and strong. And just to give you a little tip, if you are using lots of bars of soap, so I have a shampoo bar and then a body bar and it can get a little bit bulky. So when you're rolling it, I wouldn't put any more than like two pockets for soaps and things like that. Um, it, it's great for, you know, medication as well. If you're putting any tablets in, um, razors, toothbrushes, any of your girly bits that you want to pop into your roll. And then it's great. You can just throw it into your suitcase off you go. So let's take more of that recycled towel and we're going to make a little mitten. This is so easy to make. Fold your fabric in half, trace out a rough size of your hand, make it a little bit bigger and give yourself lots of room around the wrist because we're going to pop an elastic into it to make it fit to our hand. So once you have your rough shape traced on, cut out your two pieces of towel fabric and we're going to stitch them together. Once they are stitched together, you can trim off any excess and you can clip the curves. So now for the slightly fiddly part, we are going to close up that on the wrist, make it nice and snug and we're going to use some elastic. So grab a little bit of elastic and measure it around your wrist. I have small hands, so if you're making this as a present for someone, you can make it add a little bit more elastic and make it bigger. So the fiddly thing is, you are going to turn your mitten back, right inside out, inside out, and you're going to stitch the elastic onto it but when you are at your machine make sure not to stitch your whole mitten closed so take your time doing this so i'm gently pulling the elastic and stitching it and you can use a zigzag stitch if you have that setting on your sew machine if you don't have a zigzag stitch setting don't worry you can do a straight stitch you can even lengthen the stitch as well and make sure to give it a good reverse stitch when you finish so just be careful not to stitch your whole mitten closed which you could do accidentally so here is your mitten and it's time to get clean It's so easy to make your own cotton pads, you don't have to use the disposable ones. So I actually use the end of a cup for the circle template for this. So I cut out two pieces of fabric, one is an old piece of towel and the other is just a piece of cotton that I have. I'm placing them together with the right sides facing inwards. I'm going to stitch all the way around but I'm going to leave a gap so I can turn them right way out. Once I have turned it right way out, I will clip the curves. This just makes it 
like not a square if that makes sense it just keeps the circular shape but you can customize this and make them bigger or smaller depending on what you need i'm going to turn the fabric right way out and then i'm going to do a top stitch and i'm going to fold in that opening and do a top stitch and you have your very own makeup pad For this project I'm going to be using my Cricut Maker Machine and I'm going to be cutting some fabric. I'm going to be doing a patchwork cushion which is a great project if you want to practice cutting fabric and your sewing skills. For this project you're going to need four different types of fabric. You're going to need one of the pink fabric cutting mats and you're also going to use a fabric cutting blade for your Cricut Maker. Also, if you don't have a Cricut machine but you'd still like to do the patchwork cushion then you can just use a normal fabric scissors to cut the fabric squares. I just gave my fabric a quick iron to smooth out any of the wrinkles before I popped it onto the fabric cutting mat. I was able to find a patchwork project in the community section and I just tweaked it a little bit. So I want to make a 16 inch cushion and I have 16 squares that are all 12 centimeters by 12 centimeters. And I changed the colors just to give me an idea of how I wanted the pattern to look. I actually figured out how to save this and make it public so I'll leave a link to my Cricut profile where you can check out this project and you can make it for yourself. As you can see I have four mats and they have four squares each and I have four different types of fabric. I then selected the material that I'm using and I'm going to be using cotton fabric. I then follow the instructions on screen so I need to change my blade to make sure that it's a fabric cotton blade and then I'm going to load up the mat and insert it. Also, you've probably noticed that anytime I use my maker, I have it on the floor, I plunk it on the ground, but I just find it's easier to use and nothing gets jammed in the back. Generally, when I'm using my maker, I'm making a bigger project and I could be using a heavier material and I just find it easier to work off the floor. So if you're like me, the joy is for the desk and the maker's for the floor. Also, my apologies, I was calling it a fabric cutting blade, but it's actually called a rotary blade. But I'll see if I can find a link for one of these for your Cricut maker. So a rotary blade is what that tool is called. Once you have your squares cut, it's now the fun part, we get to assemble them. So I am very visual and I make mistakes easy. So I like to plan it out on the table first before I start stitching them together. So let's get the sew machine out. And this is actually, while it looks complicated, it's a fun beginner's project and a great way to practice doing some straight stitches. So I begin by doing the rows across and I stitch each square together. And I'm going to be using a half an inch seam allowance. Once you have stitched the squares, iron the seams flat. The 
now we're going to stitch all four of the rows together. So we're going to place them with the right sides of the fabric facing each other and do a straight stitch down the length of the fabric. Try your very best to line up the seams as best you can as if one of the squares is slightly off it might throw off your whole design. So to finish off my cushion I'm just doing a really easy envelope back. I'm cutting out two pieces of fabric for the back. They're going to be 16 and a half inches by 14 inches and then I'm going to sew a hem on one side of each piece of fabric. I then sandwich them together so with the right sides of the fabric facing each other I layer the two back pieces and I pin them in place and the hemmed edges both face the centre. I'm just using a pick and shears just to tidy up the edges and to stop any of the cotton fabric from fraying. If you want more sewing videos, I have two or three, well I have a playlist of sewing videos but I also have some other compilation videos that have like 10 projects in each of them. So what I can do is I can pin them um, in the comment section or they'll all be in the description box if you want to check that out. If you're new to my channel and it's your first time here, welcome, hit the subscribe button. Welcome to the community. Say hello in the comment section. And for my OG viewers, also say hello in the comment section and I'll see you in the next video. Mm -hmm.